Now to the latest attack in Turkish control northern Syria where a car bombing killed at least 17 civilians on Tuesday and that is according to Turkey's defense ministry which is at least 20 others were wounded by the blast. It's not clear who is responsible but Turkey is blaming Syrian Kurdish fighters. This happened in a village near Ras Alain, the border town that became one of the front lines in the recent Turkish offensive. Well, that offensive came right after President Trump ordered U.S. forces out of the region, if you remember, paving the way for Turkey to launch its military operation against a Turkish-led, the Kurdish-led Syrian Democratic Forces. CNN's chief international correspondent, Larissa Ward, went back to see how Kurdish civilians are coping. She is in northern Syria right now. Isa, we were here at the beginning of October when that Turkish military offensive first began. We were on the outskirts of the town of Ras Al Ain as artillery started raining down. We saw the scenes of the streets choked with people desperately trying to flee. And we wanted to come back once again to get a sense of how they're faring now. Take a look. Class should be in session now. But here in Hasaka, the school has become a temporary shelter for displaced people. In one classroom, we meet Ibrahim Hassan. The Kurdish father of five tells us he was forced to flee his home in Ras Al Ain with his children when the Turkish military operation began. This is what remains of his house. Ibrahim says it is one of many in his Kurdish neighborhood that was deliberately ransacked by Turkish-backed forces. They took everything, and after they took all our belongings, they set it on fire and burned it all. Just days before the offensive began, Ibrahim's children had posed smiling with U.S. troops patrolling the area. He says America's presence gave him a false sense of security. Then suddenly, they were gone. Since America betrayed us, every time I look at these photos of my children with the Americans, I want to erase them. Do you feel that you trust the Americans still? Definitely not. Now we hear and we see on television America saying that they're only here for the oil. Why did Trump do this? You've betrayed all the people. It's a sentiment we found shared by many here. Nearly 200,000 people have been displaced by Turkey's offensive. Hundreds of their homes have been damaged or looted. Local authorities are now trying to move them out of the schools so that class can start again and into hastily built camps like this one. Conditions are bleak and resources are scarce. Because of the security situation, international aid agencies have had to pull out, leaving the Kurds with no one to rely on but themselves. Hey. Hey. So she's saying it's really difficult here because it's very cold, especially at night. They don't have enough food, they don't have electricity, and the water's not good. Camp organizers say there are 3,000 people living here now, with more arriving every day. Almost everyone in this camp is from the town of Ras Al Ain. And Ras Al Ain used to be around 75% Kurdish. Now, though, we're told there are just a handful of Kurds left. And the people here believe that the ultimate goal of this Turkish offensive is to essentially push the Kurds out of this area completely and change the ethnic makeup of it forever. Turkey has done little to alleviate their fears. As the Kurds have poured out of these areas, Arabs have been bussed in. Syrian refugees who Turkish authorities claim are originally from these areas. After more than eight years of civil war, this part of Syria is full of stories of people forcibly displaced. In the Christian village of Tal Nasser, we find more families from Ras Al Ain, sheltering in the ruins of a destroyed church. Will you try to go home? I ask these women. There's no home to go to, they reply. ISIS cleansed this area of Christians when it was in control. They have yet to return. Now the village provides refuge for another people. 
forced from their homes with no sense of a possible return. The stated goal of Turkey's military operation here has been to create a so-called safe zone or buffer zone about 30 kilometers deep along the entirety of the Syrian-Turkish border. But from what we have seen, Isa, on the ground here, it certainly doesn't feel very safe in this safe zone. And just earlier this afternoon, uh, reports of a car bomb in the town of Ras al Ain, that is the town uh, where everyone who we talked to for our story came from, reportedly 17 people dead in that attack.